Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I'm going to do a viewer request. Didn't realize I was missing one of these from my uh, my file, but uh, I do not have one in the library. This is a Pen Reels 105. It's part of their Silver Series. It was made in Japan, and uh, this one uh, was a request from a viewer, Rick, who said that uh, he noticed that I didn't have one and would like to see the 105 serviced. So this one's been sitting in... Uh, and the part's been for a little while, but it, it'll serve the purposes of illustration here. It's in that part's been because there's a broken screw here, and uh, it's uh, one of those cases where the screw head popped off, and I'm not going to go drill that out or do anything with it. The two screws here will hold that on, and uh, the paint is in pretty lousy condition, but it is functional. It does work, and uh, we'll show you how to take this apart, how this reel is made. Let's see, I'm trying to figure out if yeah, we have an anti-reverse. Okay, we'll show you how it's made and uh, show you how to tune it up if you have one of these. So I like to start by taking off the exterior pieces. And as I do, I like to thank our first responders and essential personnel and everybody who's putting their lines, uh, lives on the line every day uh, during this pandemic to keep us safe and out of harm's way and to restore the health of those that uh, have contacted uh, this disease. That's the first aid, the essential workers, or police, fire, and rescue. Everybody in the medical fields, local uh, MDs and hospital staff, and everybody in between, thank you for everything it is that you do. You truly are appreciated. All right, well, normally you would take the three screws out, but in this case, as I mentioned, I have a broken screw on the top there, so uh, that kind of prevents that. These reels are relatively simple in design, uh, I don't believe they have any burrings in them. I think they're all bushings. They might have one burring up top there. At the time, they were competing against the Daiwa Silver Series and the Ryobi reels, and I think they finished a poor third in that regard. I just uh, It's not one of my favorite reels, but it was a value reel at an entry point, uh, and Penn, uh, Penn's first uh, effort in going offshore with the manufacturer of their reels. And then eventually everything got transferred out of there, but uh, out of uh, manufacture in uh, Philadelphia, that being there. But uh, at the time, this was uh, an early stage on that. I'm going to take the bushing off, take the shield that holds the crosswind arm off. And we can tell we just got some old grease in here. You can see it's pretty, pretty greased up there. That's why I wear a glove on my non-working hand. Sometimes I just can't... Uh, manage well with the glove on my hand, my working hand, otherwise I'd like to do that as well. Take off the star, uh, the drag knob adjuster, take off the spool, then we can remove our, our crosswind arm. And this is a good time to tell you to take pictures along the way. That's one way to ensure that as you go to reassemble the reel, you're going to get it right. It's real easy to, to confuse things. For example, this crosswind arm here looks to be uh, with the heavy side on the left so that it looks a little bit uh, like a letter G and if you put it on backwards you may have a distorted reach so remember it goes what side goes to the front and a picture helps with that okay underneath that now we have a crosswind block Crosswind block has a screw that's holding the axle shaft in, so you want to remove the screw. And I'm putting all my pieces and parts into a parts tray. That's off camera, I'll show it to you in a moment. It's the bottom of a uh, plastic jug. But it serves as a central repository for everything, so that when I go to reassemble, I'm going to uh, make sure that I know where those pieces and parts go. All right, with that screw removed, we should be able to remove the axle shaft. And you remove that axle shaft by holding the tip of the crosswind block and simply pulling up. Sometimes it's a little harder than other times. But eventually you get it off the, the shaft. In this case, I think I need a little bit more leverage here. It's partially up. It's just, there we go. And you can pull that out. You can see we've got a lot of old grease and junk in there. And that all has to be cleaned to make this reel work more efficiently. 
take the cross wind block out. We're going to remove the main gear now. We can tell it's just a case where this reel hasn't been serviced much uh, in its lifetime. And that's a little bit why it's dragging things down. I'm going to grab a 14 millimeter wrench. And we can remove that nut by turning it in a traditional counterclockwise manner. And that will help us to remove the rotor. And then underneath the rotor, we can see why we need to remove that because this is just all full of grease and gunk. And that's part of the service is to clean the, the debris, the grease, and the grime, and the junk, and then make sure that it gets a fresh coat of grease. If you don't go ahead and clean this, one of the problems that you run into is that the sand and salt and the like gets into this reel. And when it gets into the reel, it starts to, to clog it and jam it and uh, bog down performance. All right, to remove the top segment, you have to remove this dog. This dog has a forked tongue that's a friction tongue that operates by grabbing the, the uh, key ratchet here. I'll take this off and you'll see it a little bit better. Everything's full of grease in here at the moment. So this is how the assembly rides if you have this upside down or backwards or the like. Just cleaning it off. And I'll show you how this, this piece works. This is your anti-reverse dog. This is your ratchet. And it simply rides by friction so that when you're reeling, it's just going to let go. And as you go to stop, that fork is going to grab it and pull it back in. So we're just going to lay that to the side for a moment. And I want to get to the collar here to, to pull that out. Again, I don't believe this is a ball bearing reel. We're going to find out. It's been a while since I've done one of these. So we're going to remove the three screws. Now you're going to notice this is a good place to take pictures because the, the collar on this is not a round circle collar that's going to fit in any direction. There's a, uh, an indentation on the one side where that anti-reverse works. And you need to make sure that you take a picture here so that you know the clearance on this one right there goes to the inside. All right, there's a collar that's on top of the gear and the whole gear will come out once you do that, and then we can just do a little bit more cleaning here. To clean this reel, I generally use a penetrating oil. In this case, I'm using WD-40, but brands don't matter to me in penetrating oil. I think that from a degreasing standpoint, they all do a pretty good job of that. And uh, it just so happens that, I guess, whatever store I was in, when I needed a container of um, penetrating oil, happened to be selling WD-40, and so I was using that today. All right, so we're going to use the penetrating oil. We're going to use some cotton swabs. We're going to use a little bit of elbow grease. And we're going to make sure that that assembly is all clean there. There's a collar that goes on here that should be able to pull off, just like that. Here's the orientation we were talking about on that. And we do have a ball bearing on this reel. So we're going to take that ball bearing off. There should be a shim washer, maybe, underneath. And we're doing that so that we can clean the teeth of this pinion gear. I'm going to use a hard brush for that. I'm going to wipe all of that down. I want to make sure that the old grease comes out of a channel. And yes, I have it on a paper towel here because I want to, on the downward stroke, I'm wiping that brush into the towel so that I don't carry the old grease up. I can do it again. Once you're done with that, check the teeth, make sure that they're all uniform, that there's no bends in them or cracks or chips or anything. If you had really stubborn grease, go ahead and use a pick and kind of run it through the channels to get rid of that. But in this case, that's fine. I'm going to use a fishing reel grease. I'm going to use pen precision reel grease for this, not because it's a pen reel, but because it's a fishing reel grease. I really don't care on this one either what manufacturers uh, real grease you use, but I do care that you use fishing wheel grease. 
The other greases are not necessarily manufactured for marine use and water re uh, repellency and all that sort of stuff. And uh, there's no reason why you would want to, to use a general grease when there's a lot of good fishing rod greases on the marketplace that are designed just for, with that purpose in mind. Okay, I'm going to put that bearing back on. There's access below on the bearing. I'm going to use some fishing reel oil in this case. I'm using a an aftermarket uh, fishing reel oil called Reel X there. I'm going to put the assembly back, back into our case now. I'm going to grab our collar and remember that there's a indentation over by the dog. So I'm going to make sure that we put that in properly. So if you like to see about reel repair, if you're thinking of working on any of your reels, if you like to learn about fishing reels in general, and uh, if you uh, just uh, kind of have a curiosity about how reels are made, who the manufacturers were, when the reels were made and the like, well then I would ask you to subscribe to my channel. I kind of cover all of that. I have been doing reels for a long time now, and I've learned a lot, and I'm trying to pass what I've learned along. To, uh, to everybody in these YouTube videos. And, uh, if you like that, please subscribe. If you have a question about a particular fishing reel, maybe you have one that you own and you're just uh, curious about uh, the reel or maybe you're working on it and you uh, ran into a problem or a snag, well then go ahead and uh, leave that in the comment section. I'll try and get you on, back on track if I can or answer your questions about uh, something in general knowledge. Here's that uh, the ratchet for the anti-reverse as well as the anti-reverse dog. It's keyed, so it only goes on that pinion in one way. So put it on, and then rotate your pinion so that you get the the dog centered over the uh, the screw hole. And then you just have to work with this one because it's, this screw has got a shoulder on it, and you just uh, just need to work it so that it's centered inside that dog like that and then you can tighten that all down and then we'll show you how that dog works from a friction standpoint. Okay so when you're turning your reel the dog is resting back here you can see it's off the side. As soon as you go to stop these wings or, or tines on the fork pull it in and it pulls that uh, nose of the dog down to stop the reel. There you go. So this is not an instant anti-reverse reel. Those were decades away in terms of being made, but uh, that's an effective uh, system that's been used a lot. Okay, I've taken the, the grease off the main gear now. This is a big old main gear. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to use a hard brush. You can use a toothbrush. It doesn't have to be any uh, anything fancy. Use a toothbrush or something to kind of scrub it out. Again, if you saw that there was dried grease, which happens in a lot of reels, just Use your pick and just kind of work it out of those grooves. In this case, we're fine there. We're going to go ahead and we're going to give this a good greasing. Now, somebody was asking me a question the other day. said, you know, I put all this grease on reels, and after about three turns, it all settles inside. Well, there is a, a, an issue with centrifugal force that's going to spin some off, but uh, that grease that you're putting on there will serve its purpose, not to worry. Okay. We've got the grease on the shaft because that's going to go into the, uh, the bushing in the back. And we can just simply reload this. And there's a little bit of grease that I forgot to clean up on the face of this. So let's get that off too while we're at it. Then we can make sure that our crosswind block is clean. There's a channel back here. Now normally this would ride in a crosswind gear. There is no crosswind gear, and this one is that they're using a crosswind arm instead, so you don't need to do anything with that channel there. Just centrally locate the crosswind gear or crosswind block. Then we're going to go, I'll probably take that out for a moment. Let's go put the rotor back on first. Now, doesn't that look a whole lot nice and uh, clean versus what we saw initially? There's all, all kinds of issues back up there. Okay, before we go any further, bales. You do not need to take a bale off of a fishing reel if you're servicing it and the bale is performing 
as it should in this case. That's exactly what's going on here. You don't need to do anything. I do recommend that you grab that penetrating oil and just kind of shoot in the seams of it. That'll flush out any, uh, any light dirt that might be in there. But there's only springs in here, so there's really no moving parts that need to be worked on. And if you like, there's a little kick uh, down here. You can put a little bit of uh, penetrating oil in there too. Now they do say penetrating oil is a lubricant, so if there was any lubrication needed, it's a mild lubricant, you can go ahead with that. All right, here we go. We're gonna put the rotor back on. And grab that rotor nut. That's a 14 millimeter nut. Since we took this off traditionally in the counterclockwise manner, we're gonna go ahead and put it back on in the clockwise manner. And uh, I like to tighten as much of that by hand as I can. That way I'm assured that the threads are being threaded properly and, uh, and we're on our way. All right, here's our cross wind block now. We're going to grab that axle shaft. We're going to just put a little bit of grease onto the axle shaft. If you put too much on, you're just going to squeeze it out as you put it through the, the uh, pinion gear. So don't go crazy with that. Line that up as you come down. Make sure that you're lined up. Once you are, you should have a hole in the center of this cross wind gear or block. You want to remember which, uh, which screw you took out. Now in this case, there's not a lot of screws in that parts tray. That's easy enough. Sometimes you have a lot of screws in a reel, so just take those pictures. Don't be afraid to, to do that. And if you like, go online. Schematics are available for these reels. Uh, you can find them on mysticparts.com as one source. And if you uh, if you need the schematic to show you where those pieces of parts go, it's a good backup plan. All right, here's, remember what we said, we got a kind of a long line and a short line, and we noted that the long line was to the outside. You're gonna put that over the, the um, main gear first, then you're gonna line the axle shaft up, and that's how you seat the uh, swing arm. We had that little uh, flex washer here, which is going to hold that into its place. Very thin washer. And we have the bushing that goes on this side. And I was uh, talking to somebody the other day. They said that they've replaced the side bushings in these reels with burrings, and it does enhance the performance. Remember, this was a value reel that was introduced, so they saved a couple of pennies. Uh, by putting the bushings in versus bearings. But if you want to swap them out for bearings, I'm sure that would make the reel turn a little bit smoother. All right, then you just simply press the case back on. Normally you would have three screws. In this case, this reel only has the two because of the broken stud on the other one. And as I mentioned, I'm, in, I'm not going to go try and drill that out and replace it. This case will hold fine. I'm just gonna, at some point, I'll give this reel away and uh, make somebody happy uh, going to do some fishing somewhere. It's, as I mentioned, it's been in my parts tray and I probably wouldn't have gotten to it for a while, except that I got this request in. All right, the handle goes on next. And again, just be careful as you go to reassemble, make sure that everything's working. Now this handle is a little tight here, so that uh, penetrating oil will do a nice job. Just get it in the seam here. And get it in the top end on that stud and if you work it around it'll just kind of free up right away and it is freed up right away all right let's give that a turn you know what about as good as it's going to get for that reel. let's spend one more minute here doing the, the spool just to make sure that the drag washers are okay you remove the uh the clip for the, the drag stack i think this has this is either going to have felt or it's going to have um, Teflon in it, or it's going to have a combination. It has, this one has Teflon washers in it. So we have a Teflon washer on the bottom. That seats in the uh, real seat. Now Teflon washers don't get anything. No love. There's uh, no need to do any lubrication on those because the Teflon washer is a petroleum product by its nature it's self lubricating and one of the reasons why it's in a reel like this is that they don't expect the 
average uh, angler buying this reel to do that maintenance so it's a good good way to, to compromise and they put the Teflon that's in there. The middle washer is called an eared washer it goes in a slot in the middle the first washer that I put in was a round one with a rectangular center which is the shape of the axle shaft that's called a keyed washer so you have two keyed washers top and bottom and that middle one eared washer with a round center belongs uh, in the middle okay that's your drag service simple enough of course if you, if you found you were missing a washer just did a video on a missing washer in and in an ocean city reel uh, if you, yeah, that would have to be replaced if you found that they were worn um, you would want to replace them as well Okay, once you get that clip back in, you load it in here. We got a little bit of, of dirt behind here, so let's get that out. These washers should be uh, serviced every time you service a reel because these top drag systems take the brunt of the water coming in. As you're reeling the line, line's coming down, it's wet, it's throwing the water off, and even though they have a good button on this one, a lot of your spinning reels have buttons that leave a lip on that spool and that water just drains right to the, the drag washers. Yep, totally tight. There you go. Pen Wheels 105, made in Japan circa 1970s. And uh, this one's ready to go fishing. It's unfortunate that uh, it's missing a screw, but that's not holding anybody back. And uh, this one can go fishing tomorrow. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. Uh, if you want to see more, please subscribe. If you have a reel that needs to be repaired, uh, if you send me a note on the business card uh, email that follows, I'll be happy to provide you with repair information. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Hoping you have a great day. Please stay well, stay fishing, and stay watching.